Hello Tubers, Mescal here. Uh, shout out to Electron, Proton, Neutron, Moron. He sent me some of these uh, little spark gap contraptions. Yesterday I was using one like a diode and um, I'll just sort of talk you through what I'm up to. And I've got this uh, set up here where there's a large capacitor. It's an oil field type capacitor. Uh, it says 1400 volts AC, 180 hertz. 3 microfarad uh, that was out of um, they're out of uh, an x-ray machine and um, I've been watching some stuff done by Peter Lindemann and he's been talking through the uh, Ed Gray uh, uh, tube spark gap arrangement where there's um, and I've got some ceramic stuff to, to pull that off should be capable of making some sort of arrangement here so what happens is uh, where's that uh, I've got a welding rod I'm going to use for the um, spark gap so um, around the spark gap there'll be a shield and the shield catches what emanates from the spark gap you need to use a DC spark gap and so um, I just thought I'd show you what I've got going on here there's a battery type you'd find a 12 volt battery uh, in a lawnmower or a motorbike and there's a Commodore Holden Commodore ignition coil there on a Jacobs ladder mark 2 uh, kit uh, that was from JCAR and I've got 20 kilovolt diodes here in a full bridge arrangement and so I just thought I'd show you what's going on we might try and um, I don't want to blow one up, but we may as well see what happens because that's uh, all part of the fun, isn't it? So um, what I'm going to do is uh, put the connection there, which will put the power to the ignition coil driver, and then the uh, high voltage will come up through these black leads and come out as DC and store as DC in the capacitor. So I'll pop that down there where I can pick it up without being near any leads. And we'll set that running. And I'll just use the back edge there so you can see the spark without going through the tube. And um, I've got headset on at the moment so it's not very loud to me but um, it's really snappy and it echoes off the bush there. And something Peter Lindemann mentioned was that Hmm. Oh, I got it to light up. Peter Lindemann mentioned that that, um, that spark that you get, that real orange sparky stuff, he said that orange sparky shit, um, when you see that, that is the, uh, the disruptive uh, superluminal type of emission that um, Tesla got right into he basically dropped his high frequency research and dived into the superluminal stuff and that is what the um, uh, the experiment with the um, the u-shaped um, the u-turn where you've got the lamps on there shows that um, it's a different kind of electricity it uh, it doesn't follow the the normal rules of being short circuited and it will travel um, in such a way that it skins over now we talk of the skin effect in radio but this kind of transmission is somewhat ignored by modern science because it has a superluminal velocity which they say can't happen so that orange sparky stuff we see coming off there at right angles to the field is um, what we want to have happening inside the Ed Gray tube and then we catch what comes off of the shield and then we put that over an inductive load and then through a step down transformer and then back into the battery. Now Ed Gray claimed that um, most of the stuff was, most of the power wasn't dissipated and that it in fact 90% of it wasn't even used up and it got returned back to the battery. But Peter Lindemann 
uh, seems to think that what actually happens is you pretty much lose everything that you put from the battery into the system but what you get back off the spark gap shield is such uh, above and beyond the power that you lost that you're well into the realm of like 400 percent more return so i don't know what i'm going to see from this but it's, it's worth mucking about with and the end goal would be obviously to um, have cheap power to put over the hydrogen cells and there's something I have to go back to and it's a shout out to Crop227 if you're listening mate I haven't heard from you in a while uh, he uh, showed me and got me to do an experiment a long time ago using the side of a spark gap a multiple spark gap where I was um, tapping off the side of the gap so either side of the gap so um, it didn't make sense but it made the most reactive almost like there was an ultrasonic transducer in the water because there was cavitation and implosion and it, it was quite outrageous and I've never done anything with it and so I thought um, it might be a good idea to go back to that because um, yeah, it, it involved water and it involved um, a very very reactive sort of behaviour I'd like to also mention that these things can be used as a diode. If I didn't have that um, diode bridge there, I could use that to arc directly off the coil, put the coil, one side of the coil onto the cap, and then the other side arc off of that straight onto the, um, the terminal. And the little spark gap happening inside the tube allows a DC charge to accumulate without using any diode. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And, uh, and uh, if you give a thumbs down, you won't even see it nowadays because YouTube's decided that uh, in the, for the, you know, a, a, an all-inclusive world where everyone can have a voice and not be offended, that they're going to take away the thumbs down. So um, what do you think about that? <laughs> thanks for watching.